my name is Heather Loomis. My husband David and I own and operate Bolaris Orchards in Troy, Pennsylvania. This is Lily. And she's actually a really great example of one of our Rommeldale CVM sheep who would be considered a natural colored Rommeldale. The Rommeldale breed that we're raising is a critically endangered breed. These sheep, when we started, were on the critical list for the Livestock Conservancy's um, conservation priority list. And in recent, I think just in the last year or two, have um, been graduated up to threatened. So there has been some improvement in, in the numbers for this rare breed, but we certainly have a lot of work ahead of us in order to get these uh, guys and gals off of that critical list and onto more farms. And um, we can do that with the help of those of you who are fiber artists. Um, by creating a demand for their wool, it certainly creates a demand to have these sheep um, on the ground and, and in people's lives. So the Rommeldale breed is a dual purpose breed. They are really intelligent. They're quite social. Uh, they're really a joy to be around and sometimes think that they're lap sheep. Uh, they're a medium size breed. And so this girl here is probably about 150 to 160 pounds. The use will be 135 to, I believe, 165. And the, gosh, I wish they were friendlier. Um, and the rams can be about two to 200 to about 250. Um, this gal here, while she's here, we'll visit with her. This is Caroline. And Caroline is a white Rommeldale. So when this breed originally started in the early 1900s, um, they were raised only for, for white fleece. That's all that they were known to have. And the breed was started with a cross. So it was Rommelay ewes that were crossed over with a New Zealand Marsh Romney rams from the World's Fair in San Francisco in the early 1900s. It created a breed that has good, healthy, sturdy feet. It increased the fiber length of those Rommelay ewes and also improved the meat carcass as well. So it ended up creating an animal that has, as we mentioned, really great multiple purposes within, even for s small farms, I believe, as well as for larger flocks as well. The fun thing that has come about with this breed, originally they were all white Rommeldales, and in time in the 1970s, they had some lambs that were born that presented with these beautiful badger markings, and the wool was gray, and it had this beautiful variegation in it. And so that's where our additional name within the breed comes from. So we have our Rommeldales who are white, like Caroline, or natural color, like Lily here. And then we have some that haven't visited yet who are what we would call a CVM. And that is California, where the breed was started, variegated because their fleeces have this beautiful variegation of multiple shades within it. And then um, mutant. <laughs> That's alarming to Lily, but they are not mutants. It was just, it's a misnomer. When uh, this started happening and presenting itself, they didn't understand or realize at that time, science wasn't um, advanced to the point where we understand color genetics a little bit better. And these were not genetic mutations, but rather just a natural expression of color patterns that can be available within really a uh, fair number of sheep breeds. Um, this is Lily's sister, Lolly. Lollipop um, is her formal is her formal name, and she, you got a little something right there. Okay, so Lollipop is again another example of a natural colored Rommeldale, and their fleece length. A lot of fiber artists really enjoy the fleece on these sheep. The fleece is a three to six inch staple length. It is a fine fiber. And so that makes it a next to skin wear. Micron count for the breed is generally in a 20 to 25 micron range. And so it does make it a lot of fun to work with. It crosses over into the merino a little bit um, with that lower end of the micron scale. It comes in many different colors. That is really, I think, one of the um, really fun things about this breed. So we have our natural whites that you saw with Caroline. We have, in this case, Lily and Lolly are um, their black sheep. And so their wool is solid black, but it does get some sun tipping. So when it's processed, it's often more of like a that pretty um, kind of a chocolate color that you get. And then if we get any CVMs to join us, if not, I will go uh, find some to take a look at. 
their fleeces can be um, a couple of different colors, as can one of our other natural colors. So although we have a couple of the black sheep that have joined us, we also have moret, which in sheep is also known to be the brown. And then we also, um, for the CVMs, it can be brown, they can be white with um, like a silver gray in them, and they can also have these beautiful variegated grays, which can run anywhere from like what I like to think of as a charcoal to a gunmetal gray, right down to really my, kind of a rose gray as well. So there's a lot of variety. There's a lot of ways that the color can express itself in these sheep, both in their facial patterns as well as um, within the fleece itself. And when we're talking about our natural colored uh, sheep, like Lollipop here and Lily, their legs, their underbelly, their faces, um, they will all be solid color. They can have spotting, and that's this indicator here on top of the head can tell us that, that she may carry spotting genes within her uh, genetic background as well. So there's so much variety that can come out of some of these fleeces. Um, if you're looking to raise these sheep, I did not have sheep when I got started. My husband was raised with sheep here at our farm, so he had some understanding. I did not, uh, but they, this was a really great beginner breed for me. We always thought that we would add another breed to the flock. He was used to a lot of different breeds and many on the commercial scale. Once we got started with these, we never, we never added another breed. He adores this breed, as do I. Um, they're, as I mentioned, they are intelligent. They have a lot of personality. They're great to work with. They flock well, so it's easy to keep them kind of all moving in the same direction. Our particular group is trained to some vo very simple vocal commands um, of come and out, and they respond to, obviously my voice is shepherd, but also to clapping. And I find the clapping has been helpful to um, train them to because then if I have to have someone else watch the flock for me for a few days, they have a way of actually getting the group to respond to them without um, having my voice around. And so those are some of the high points. They have very strong, sturdy feet. We have very little problems with any kind of a foot issue. They are also a breed that is very parasite resistant as well as resilient. So even if some of them do carry a parasite load, they are not affected by that as well. So here, here comes a whole, a whole bunch. This is Molly. This is my flock bestie. That's actually the grandmother here to Lollipop. And if you bear with me, we'll take a look here at Oksana. Oksana. So Oksana is a great um, expression of CVM, but with Moret as her main color. So she is all brown. She has a kind of an oatmeal colored fleece with some of that pretty cocoa color that's mixed into that as well. And as you can see, it's kind of a fun group. I really like them. I hope that you have enjoyed this. I'm going to see if I can find us a CVM to look at. I'll edit that into this video, I hope. And I'll also see if I can find some pictures of fleece that I'll add into this as well so you can see the variety of color that happens. Molly, thanks you for joining us. And we'll see you all here soon. Thanks so much. So this lovely lady here is May. She's one of our moms for this year, so she's not back into a coat just yet. Helps us just keep an eye on their conditioning since we're, um, it's important for us to know that these moms are recovering well after weaning. She's, uh, she's got, she got the hunger right now. So she's busy noshing, but while she is, we'll talk about what we're looking at. May here is a classic CVM. So she has dark legs, a dark underbelly, and if she stands still, I can get you. May May. <laughs> A quick look at her face. She just wants to eat. Hi, May. Hi, honey. Hi, yes. How are you? So she has these big, like kind of that U shape on her head. Big, beautiful, bold, swiping eyebrows there. And then some that black around her chin as well. So she's very classic. You can see how dense their wool is on their body. Um, adults will get a six to 10 pound fleece off of them. My lambs are averaging, once they're skirted, um, 
usually about a nice two to three pound fleece. So that's a great way to start out. So she looks very light, but if we look down into her wool, you can see that crimp. You can even see some variegation in her gray. Normally these gals are in coats, as you saw through most of the flock, and that will be the case with her. It just helps to keep their wool clean, and it just helps to make it marketable and help us to provide a really nice product for all of you. So that's May and your very traditional and classic California variegated mutant. <laughs>